From 1954 until 1962, the approximately 100 men of Battery D of the 9th Army Anti-Aircraft Artillery Regiment were stationed on Angel Island in order to man the Nike Ajax missiles intended as a last-ditch defense against a Soviet air attack. The island's installation, known as Nike Site SF-91, was one of several in the San Francisco Bay Area. The Cold War was at its height, and relations between the United States and the former Soviet Union were at the breaking point. At the time, an outbreak of hostilities between the two superpowers seemed inevitable. Named after the winged goddess of victory in Greek mythology, the Nike Ajax missile was 34 feet in length, counting the booster. It had a top speed of 1,000 miles per hour and a range of 25 miles, and it carried a conventional warhead. More than 300 Nike bases were constructed in the United States between 1954 and 1963. The men manning Nike site SF-91 were housed in the old post hospital at East Garrison. The Nike installation itself consisted of several features on the south side of Angel Island and atop Mount Livermore, which was then known as Mount Ida. There was an assembly area at Point Blunt, a fire control center atop the peak, and three radars at different locations on the island. The Army leveled the top of Mount Livermore in order to provide for the construction of the fire control center and a helicopter landing pad. The actual missiles were located in a launch installation located just above Point Blunt. Three individual launch pads, each consisting of a magazine and missile silos, were constructed in an east-to-west alignment. Each of the launch pads was capable of holding four missiles. Large pyramidal-shaped berms were constructed directly above the installation in order to provide some protection from the firing of the missiles, as well as providing for a line of sight from the fire control center down to the magazines. The missiles were aimed to the north for the defense of Marin County. Thus, they were fired toward the operators in the fire control center and over the top of Mount Livermore. This is what was called an over-the-shoulder installation. The three magazines were laid out similarly, one beside the other. Each had identical above-ground accoutrements, including magazine doors, escape hatches, and ventilation boxes. The missiles were removed by the Army in 1962, after they had been made obsolete by the introduction of intercontinental ballistic missiles. While many of the underground control mechanisms have been removed as well, the above-ground aspects of the facility are fairly intact. A 300-acre wildfire in October 2008 scorched most of the southern side of Angel Island, but did not reach the Nike launch pad installation. During my post-wildfire survey, I found physical evidence of the Nike base's presence, such as Cold War-era cartridge cases and an ammunition box scattered around about the island. The more I saw, the more I became interested in the archaeology of the Cold War era. With my interest in the history of the Nike base expanding, I conducted a cursory survey of the launch pad installation. While inspecting one of the metal ventilation boxes, I found that it was decorated with a significant example of Cold War era graffiti. What appears to be an identical depiction is found on both the north and south sides of the ventilation box. The graffiti has been all but destroyed on the south side, primarily due to its exposure to the sun and elements. The graffiti is now barely discernible. However, the depiction on the north side is intact and in reasonably good condition. The graffiti consists of a drawing of a bee, bearing a very lethal stinger. A close examination of the stinger reveals that it's a Nike missile. B section, spelled B-E-E-S-E-C-T, is printed at the lower right of the drawing. It appears likely that the magazine associated with this ventilation box was known as B section. This interpretation is bolstered by the fact that this magazine is the second of three in the east to west alignment, the sections A, B, and C. The drawing of the B is now old enough to qualify as being historic. Furthermore, given the drawing's association with the Nike installation and its uniqueness as Nike art, this graffiti is historically significant. I think the state should protect and preserve this unusual cultural resource. The graffiti warrants a more proper recording than I was able to give it. The ventilation box appears to be too large to easily remove for off-site curation. 
although this might be considered if deemed feasible. If the ventilation box's removal isn't feasible, then consideration should be given to mounting a protective covering over the drawing of the bee in order to protect it from ongoing weathering and the ever-present threat of vandalism. Although there are other former Nike bases in the San Francisco Bay Area, I doubt there are any other with such Nike art still visible. This seems unique to me.